There's less than a week to go until King Charles's coronation, but it is Meghan's estranged family who have captured the attention of the media. They participated in a tell-all interview on Channel 7 where they showcased never-before-seen footage of Meghan and refuted what the Duchess has said about them. The shock claims were made by her dad, Thomas Markle, half-brother Thomas Markle Jr and half-sister Samantha. Some viewers were outraged by the interview. Others had sympathy for a family who claimed Meghan effectively ruined their lives. Joining me now on the latest Royal News is the wonderful Royal commentator, Cara Kennedy. Cara, let's have a quick look at what Channel 7 showcased on the weekend. We'll try to unpack what we've seen on the other side. Meghan knows you've had a stroke. Of course he has to know. I'm taking it from that that she hasn't called you? No. No phone call? No. How long has it been now? It's been four years. So just radio silence? Exactly. I grew up as an only child, which everyone who grew up around me knows. And I wished I had siblings. So before she met Harry, mm -hmm. you had no doubt she was your sister? I called her my sister. My little sister, though, I said. I remember when she was born, big new addition to the family, and it was, we just have a very young sister here. If Megan was here now, what would you say to her? Let's go somewhere and talk. And uh, I say, what's wrong? What, what, how can I, I fix this? How can I fix this? Cara, what do you make of all of that? That's an unhappy family. Uh, certainly the sister there, <laughs> the fact that Megan calls herself an only child now would be, well, it would be pretty insulting and hurtful. Of course, uh, but I'm not really sure why people are surprised about their reaction. I mean, they've pretty much said the same thing from day one, and it's especially a... Um, Megan being stubborn and not kind of changing her mind and picking up the phone. I mean, the Duchess of Sussex is, is nothing if not stubborn. But um, the Markles say that this will be the first and, and possibly last ever interview given as a whole family. Uh, they said they all agreed that she'd be welcomed back into their home with open arms, which is pretty surprising. I thought there would be a little bit more resentment by now, uh, considering how long it's been. But I'm not really sure how much of a, a exclusive this is. They were old family videos. Uh, I'm not really sure how, how interesting people think that is. A lot of royal watchers that I know were disappointed um, as we didn't really get any new information. And I, pro I think it's probably a good mm. idea for the Markles to kind of lay this to rest now because it does legitimize the criticism against them that they want press attention and and kind of megan hasn't come out against them and said anything so i think it's time to put it to bed because it, it just gives them more more to grab onto well, you make a good point there because they're doing what uh you could argue harry and megan have done which is air their dirty laundry and, and talk about their family members in a disparaging manner to the media. And for most people, that just leaves a bad taste. No matter what your grievances are, it's something that shouldn't be done in uh, tell-all interviews now. But it's not just the family. Fox News is reporting that one of Meghan's oldest friends has also turned on the Duchess, TV presenter Lizzie Cundy, who first met Meghan when she was starring in Suits, said... When you served your purpose, she moved on to the next. I think that's what she's like. Megan gets what Megan wants. Uh, again, not nice commentary from a former friend. Yeah, well, there were pretty scathing sentences in there, but what I do find interesting is... Um, I've never met Lizzie Candy, but she's obviously lovely because she she reflects on her time as friends with Megan as great and she wishes her um, happiness for the future. But she does make that point that when you're kind of, when you've served your purpose and there's nothing left to give, then Megan will um, kick you to the curb. And, and we've seen that, we've seen that throughout. I mean, um, Lizzie mm. writes in that piece, interestingly, that um, when she first met Megan, Megan was very interested in 
British life. She wanted to find a, a British man. She wanted to crack the British media and, and start working in jobs. I think Made in Chelsea was the one programme that was named. And that just shows Meghan's agenda the whole time. And I think... Um, when Meghan did finally make that uh, transition to British life a few years later, her American friends were dumped. Well, we've heard that also from Piers Morgan. He tells the story of how Meghan went out of her way to be friendly with him, come to London, have lunch, and she was just the... Uh, the loveliest of friends until she met Harry and he was ghosted immediately, never heard from her again, never responded to a message. And we've heard similar stories from, from other friends in the US as well. So that does seem to be a bit of a theme and it might explain, Cara, why at her wedding there were people there who didn't know her, like George Clooney and, and his wife. They, uh, I think they said in an interview at, at one point that they didn't know Harry and Meghan, and yet they were at the wedding along with Oprah. Yeah, that's that was hilarious. So there was a friend of um, of Harry's late mother, Diana, in one of the rows next to George and Amal Clooney, and she just kind of went towards the couple and just said, oh, how do you know the happy couple? And, and George and Amal replied, we don't. So, yeah, that's very interesting. I think <laughs> I wrote, wrote about this a long time ago, and I basically said that... Um, what Megan did was Google who would make me look good at my wedding and then invited every single one of them. Well, it seems to be that way. And same with her, uh, uh, not baby shower, for her bachelorette, if you want to call it that. Uh, you wondered, how does she know these people? Is there any actual history of her spending any time with them? And really no family at the wedding apart from her mother, no cousins, aunties, uncles. Obviously, we know the uh, uh, sister and brother and dad have some issues uh, with, with Meghan at the moment. Now, let's move on to Prince Harry. He's in a bit of hot water over testimony he gave at the High Court about his phone being hacked. Uh, tell us what happened after Harry brought up these hacking claims. So I think this, this is one of the three... Um, suits that he has right now with different newspapers in Britain. Um, so a high court judge has questioned Harry for factual inconsistencies um, from his witness statement with the in his latest battle. So what he did was claim, um, he claimed that there was a secret agreement between the royal family and news executives which stopped him from bringing his phone hacking claims earlier, because basically what the judge said is, why are you only bringing this up now? But uh, but why this is this is inconsistent with what he's previously said is that is because Harry claimed that he couldn't sue before 2019 because he had no knowledge of the phone hacking. So these two statements, obviously, only one of them can be true. Uh, but what I've heard is that. Mm. Uh, he did know about about the claim before 2019 and why he he, he chose not to do anything is because his brother uh, Prince William was offered millions of pounds as a settlement and Harry was only offered 200,000 and he wasn't happy with this figure but William and Kate were hacked far more than Harry so the, the number uh, kind of reflected how many times this had happened to them. Oh, dear me. I mean, that's one thing to be uh, telling fibs to Oprah in a sit-down interview, but it's another thing to be uh, doing that in a high court trial. <laughs> that's where you can get yourself into a bit of strife. Cara Kennedy, always a pleasure. Thank you for joining me.